Hello gentlemen, welcome to the section 6.7, video number two. This video is a part of our um, acid base series and it's going to be on the pH scale and extensions from pH. Now the pH scale is a scale used to identify how acidic or basic a solution is. This scale ranges from 0 to 14. Here's an example of it here, 0 all the way to 14. Now acids have a pH that is lower than 7. The more acidic you are, the lower your pH. So lower than 7. The closer you get to 0, the more acidic you're becoming. Bases have a pH higher than 7. So from beyond 7 upward to 14, you're becoming more basic. So more basic equals a higher pH. Neutral solutions have a pH of 7. Again, lower than 7, acidic. Higher than 7, basic. In the middle, you are neutral. Now, pH is measured by using a pH meter. It's kind of like a probe that you would dip into a solution. pH paper, a litmus paper, or an indicator. An indicator itself is simply a weak or a weak base or weak acid that changes color with a varying of a variety of pHs. pH expresses the concentration of hydrogen plus ions or H3O plus. Remember in our <clears throat> first video, we talked about the relationship between H plus and HGO plus. Essentially, they're, they're the same thing. pH is expressing the concentration, we know what concentration is, of hydrogen plus ions in solution. So how many moles per liter of hydrogen ions do you have in solution? That's what pH is measuring. Now, pH stands for the power of hydrogen. Literally, pH, power of hydrogen. It's expressed mathematically by this equation. pH is equal to the negative log of the constant times the concentration of hydrogen ions. This is in brackets. These brackets mean concentration of. In this, in this case, it's the hydrogen ions in a solution. And we measure that in moles per liter or molarity. Now, here is a sample problem. So if I was given a problem that says find the pH of a solution with a hyd hydrogen ion concentration of 0 0.01 molar. I would just plug this in to a calculator. Here's my equation. Substitute my in for my variable. So this is pH equals to the negative log of 0 0.01 molar. Now you probably haven't dealt with logs yet, maybe not, maybe in Algebra 2 you will or have already, but if you have not, we're going to talk more about what this means in class. So for right now, just go with me. This is a button on your calculator. Find it. Once you do this, you'll get a pH equal to 2. So a solution that has 0 0.01 molar concentration of hydrogen ions has a pH of 2. pH of 2 is acidic. So we can say, well, that solution is acidic because of the concentration of hydrogen ions that it has. Okay, you can also find the power of hydroxide. Not really a term that we use very often, but the pOH, it's called. The power of hydroxide ions in the solution. It's the negative log of hydroxide ions. It will be the same mathematics as we did over here. This is not pH. Thus, we do not use this scale when we're talking about pH, so we wouldn't say it's a pH of 10, so it's basic. It doesn't work the same way. This is a pH scale, not a pOH scale, so you wouldn't use this directly with that scale. Now, the pH scale is something we call a logarithmic scale. So that log that we saw in the formula, let's talk a little bit about it now. We'll talk more about it tomorrow. But pH is a logarithmic scale, so the concentration of H+, plus increases or decreases by a factor of 10. Because our concentrations can be very small, meaning like 0 0.0000000001 molar in different solutions, you don't want to have to write that every time. So scientists created a scale, excuse me, with simple numbers, 1 to 14. But they really represent a logarithmic scale. So this is basically amplifying everything. So these are by factors of 10. The example is here. So we just calculated in the last board that um, a solution that had a concentration of 0 0.01 molar had a pH of 2. That was our last calculation. 
Now say, um, I want to know the hydrogen ion concentration of something that had a pH of 3. Well, one step on the logarithmic scale or the pH scale is a factor of 10. So we know when we go from 2 to 3, we're becoming less acidic. So we're probably going to have, or not probably, but we're going to have less H plus ions in solution. Less H plus ions means less acidic, which is more towards the basic side, increasing in pH. So our hyd hydrogen ion concentration would be decreased by a factor of 10, becoming less acidic. So if we did that math, if this decreased by a factor of 10, if I had 10 less, or 10 times less, excuse me, um, ions of hydrogen, it would be this, 0.001. So plug this into your calculator using the same equation for pH and see if we get a pH of 3. I assure you we will. That's just a reverse design there. Now let's talk a little bit about water. Water is extremely important when we talk about acids and bases. So the pH of water and equilibrium. We'll talk about what equilibrium means in just a moment. Water itself contains small amounts of H plus and OH. Wow, crazy. We never thought water was anything that had to do with ions. But if we take a snapshot of water... When, a wa when water is standing by itself, pure water, this is what it looks like. It is dissociating into H plus and OH. And then we see this new arrow here. We've never seen another arrow go backwards before. This means, well, it goes from its ions right back to water, then right back to its ions, then right back to water. It goes back and forth. That situation is called equilibrium. So this equation over here to the right shows an equilibrium. It's a condition that exists when the forward reaction rate equals the reverse reaction rate, such that there appear, appears to be no change in the concentration of products or reactants. So the, re, the reaction is going that way, then this way, then that way, then that way, and there seems to be no change in, product, in the concentration of products or reactants because it's in equilibrium. It's going back and forth. Now, if we continue looking at this relationship here, we're going to go on this side of the board here. With this equation, water <clears throat> dissociating into H plus and OH minus, we have to think about what the pH of water is. Well, most of you guys know the pH of water is 7, neutral. Water has a neutral, well, is neutral. So if we look in relationship to this equation of pH, pH equals a negative log of our hydrogen ion concentration, that means, well, H plus concentration must equal 1 times 10 to the negative 7th molar. All I did was a backwards design. I plugged in a pH of 7, and I solved for H plus. I'll show you guys how to do that in class. Now, in order for, in order for water to be neutral, have a pH of 7, that means, well, my hydroxide ions must be equal to my... Um, Hydronium ions, they must be equal in order for the pH to be neutralized to 7. So, that means my, o, my concentration of OH ions, or hydroxide ions, must be equal to my concentration of hydronium ions, or H plus ions. So, OH minus is also 1 times 10 to the negative 7. These two balanced out together in equal concentrations makes a neutral solution of a pH of 7. Now, the concentration of H plus ions and OH ions, OH minus ions, excuse me, have an inversely proportional relationship. We know what that relationship means. It's as one increases, the other decreases. This relationship makes their product a constant, just like with kinetic and potential energy. The product or the addition of those was a constant mechanical energy. So, the product of the concentration of my H plus ions and the concentration of my OH minus ions is a constant. That constant is called K sub W. We call it KW. Also called the equilibrium constant. So KW is equal to the product of my two concentrations. My concentration of H plus times the concentration of OH minus. If I plug in these values that we decided they had over here, I get this relationship. Once I Multiply these two times each other, I get my Kw is equal to 1 times 10 to the negative 14th molar. This is a constant. This is saying that my two concentrations, when multiplied times each other, have this 
concentration. Now, from this relationship, if I were to, let's say, take the pH of this and the pH of that, I could say, well, as my, or in, in using my inverse relationship, I could say, as my H plus concentration increases, my OH minus concentration decreases. So I become more acidic and then less basic. That could be said the other way as well. And then I get this relationship. If I say, well, I'm going to solve this concentration, plug this in here, get my pH. pH plus pOH, what we talked about in earlier today, equals 14. That makes sense. Get the concentration of this, I mean pH of this, pOH of this, and the, next, the log of this, and you'll get 14. This is a constant as well. This is an equation that we'll be using as well to talk about this relationship. An example would be, if pH is 3, what is the pOH? Well, this is just a little arithmetic here. Um, 14 minus the pH of 3, giving you a pOH of 11. So, gentlemen, take notes on this stuff. Hopefully some of this made sense. If it didn't, rewind it. And um, I'll talk to you later.